Alright, I feel like there was a point where every day I had to make a video about Francis Ngannou. But since then, I mean, I really haven't talked about the guy in a while. Like, what has been going up with him? There's been a lot of updates, including a massive update that just came out today. And something that I think might be possible that might save Francis Ngannou's career. What's up, guys? Welcome back to a brand new video. If you guys are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button, like, comment, and share. And we are almost at 11,000 subscribers. Like, I swear to God, we are just a few away. So if you guys could just hit the subscribe button. We honestly might be already at 11K by tomorrow. But just hit the subscribe button like comment and share and comment below so the algorithm you know pushes the video you guys definitely gave me a lot of support on the last video and the video before that so thank you guys for that and let me know what you guys want to see francis and ganu do next do you guys want to see him do boxing mma let me know and without further ado let's just get into this video all right francis and ganu now obviously you know i'm just gonna speed up this recap because i'm sure a lot of you guys already know was the ufc champion had a lot of negotiation problems wanted more pay wanted to do boxing wanted basically free agency the ufc was just basically like nah we have john Hun Jones, get out of here. We don't need you. Francis Ngannou parted ways with the UFC. He left the UFC. UFC offered him like an $8 million contract to fight John Jones as well as pay-per-view points, which I think was a pretty good offer. Like the pay-per-view for that fight would have definitely done like a million. He probably would have gotten over $10 million for that fight. I don't really know how pay-per-view points work, but he probably would have gotten a lot of money off the fight as well as a legacy. Like if you beat John Jones, this isn't just about one fight. This is about a career, a legacy. You will forever be able to make money because people always know Francis Ngannou was the only guy to beat John Jones. And let's be real, he had a fair chance. The guy has knockout power that negates all skill. And it's unfortunate for Francis because John Jones really did destroy Cyril Gaon. And it's kind of like now John Jones is the clear heavyweight champion. When Francis really did have a shot at beating John Jones. Now you guys already know my prediction. I had been saying it before Francis left the UFC. I thought John Jones was going to beat him. But I can't deny that there's a solid possibility that Francis and Gaon who catches John Jones. But regardless, you know, he departed ways. And we haven't really heard from him in a while. Other than other promotions coming out and saying Francis is demanding a lot of money. BKFC claiming that Francis Ngannou demanded an unrealistic amount of money. As well as one championship saying that there was a non-financial reason. Explaining further and saying Francis wanted to be a chairman in the organization. In terms of MMA, we really had to narrow it down to one option. And it was the PFL. And Francis did announce a couple days ago that he was signing with the PFL. And to be honest, I wasn't too impressed. I didn't want to make a video on it because it just wasn't too big of a deal. I thought first of all, Francis isn't going to be fighting in a year. He wants to do boxing first and by the time he's fighting he's gonna be like 37 38 like the guy's up there in age like granted heavyweights usually fight a little bit older but still you know i think he should definitely get his fights in now before it's too late before it becomes that guy that just anybody can beat so at first i really wasn't into it i was like all right this isn't a good idea and plus the boxing thing who you're gonna box it seems like anthony joshua is going to fight deontay wilder at the end of the year at least that's the rumored fight that's going on you're supposed to fight Usyk at the end of the year Usyk and wilder might fight there's a whole bunch of different matchups that could happen none of them really include Ngannou because they don't really need and Ganu to sell pay-per-views. I think the most likely option would have been an Anthony Joshua because in terms of his career, it's not like he's going to be fighting for belts right now. And he is a big name. That would have been a good fight, but it looks like we have an update, a massive update on this boxing news because Tyson Fury, yes, the heavyweight champion, some may consider him to be the greatest heavyweight of all time, has come out on Instagram talking a lot of shit, talking about Joe Rogan, saying how he could beat John Jones, which let's be honest, guys, I I'm not even going to break that sentence down. I heard him say that John Jones could fuck me up if we went in the room together. I don't think so. Not a man born for him. Mother can fuck me up in a room on our own. Whatever happens in that room, I'd be walking out. Not a fucking problem. But also saying how Usyk's afraid to fight him, which, yeah, right. We all know the story there. I love Tyson Fury, but come on, bro. Like, he's losing fans by the minute with this whole thing. Stop mentioning Alexander Usyk. He tried to fight you April 29th. Regardless, he's claiming that he's running away and saying he doesn't have an opponent, looking for an opponent. But you know who's available and wants to box? Francis Ngannou. And I think this is the perfect time to make the fight. I mean, maybe a perfect time would have been when Francis was with the UFC. And if the UFC got involved, that would have probably been the more perfect time. But this is the second best perfect time. This is right before. Ngannou's gonna sign with the PFL. He's gonna get a whole bunch of money. The only thing that I fear is that Francis Ngannou might not get the money that he is expecting. Apparently, Andy Ruiz Jr. wanted $20 million to fight Tyson Fury, and Fury just laughed at it and moved on. And when you look at the Dillian White and Tyson Fury fight, that fight was an 80 20 split, obviously in favor for Tyson Fury. And I am a little bit afraid that this is going to be a negotiation tactic to get Andy Ruiz to sign, saying, hey, I'll fight Ngannou. I have other options, which could be a possibility here. Like, this could all be a negotiation tactic, which I am afraid. 
afraid of. And I'm hoping Nganu doesn't get played. But I think that this fight makes sense. I think it makes sense for both guys. Tyson Fury doesn't have a fight lined up. And I think I'm the only person in the universe that would rather see Andy Ruiz Jr. versus Tyson Fury instead of Nganu versus Fury. That's simply because I am a fan of Andy Ruiz. So, but other than that, I assume that more people would rather watch the Nganu fight. That fight is interesting, at least with the power. Andy Ruiz will probably lose that fight to Tyson Fury. This adds a little bit more intrigue. And yes, I think Nganu would most likely lose to Tyson Fury anyway. But at least we have that power. The power that can negate all skill, as we talked about before with John Jones. He can knock anyone out. And it's not just a right hand you gotta look for. You gotta look for uppercuts, hooks. I think this would be an easy win for Tyson Fury. Don't get me wrong. But I think this would be a decent payday for Nganu. And because Andrew Ruiz is still an option, I am afraid that Nganu might not get the money that he is looking for. Because I think Nganu was expecting to make like $20 million. And if he's not gonna pay Andrew Ruiz, he sure as hell not gonna pay Nganu $20 million. Nganu doesn't do much for Tyson Fury's career. But who knows? Maybe he can make more than Andrew Ruiz. I don't know. I'm not really sure. I guess Nganu would be the bigger draw. But I think in terms of legacy, Andrew Ruiz is more up there. And he is a decent name in boxing. I don't know. That is tough for me to decide. Regardless, I think the boxing news is great. But if the boxing thing doesn't work out, I am really concerned about this PFL deal. There isn't any big names in heavyweight in the PFL. Like, let's be honest. Most of the big names there are in the lower weight classes, like Brendan Longname or Kayla Harrison. There isn't too many big heavyweights. And we always run into the problem where, you know, we've seen other UFC fighters go to the PFL and lose. We saw Tiago Santos just lose. We've seen Marlon Moraes just lose. And I understand they weren't the champion in the UFC, but it is a possibility where Francis Ngannou does run into a heavyweight and lose. And where does he go from there? And to my understanding, he's fighting on the pay-per-view, not the season. And can Francis Ngannou really carry a pay-per-view with another heavyweight? I'm not so sure about that because when you look at the Cyril Gaon numbers, apparently it did 200k. And that's what the UFC, that's what Brandon Moreno. I think it maybe did more than 200k. I've heard it did 200k, but I think it might have done a little bit more. But I don't think that he's the pay-per-view draw that he thinks he is. And let's be real, that's what the UFC 200k. So I think you could logically maybe split it in half. And that's being generous. And that goes to the PFL and that's 100k pay-per-view. And that's right now, like maybe in a year's time, maybe this thing sells even less than 100k. And I'm not trying to be a hater here. At the end of the day, if he just wanted freedom from the UFC and the ability to box and do MMA, then this is a huge W for Francis. And I don't want to take that away from him. If he decides, hey, this is what I want, then at the end of the day, if Francis is happy, he's happy. It's not really up to us to say, hey, he fumbled the bag here. He fumbled the bag there. If he's happy, then he's happy. And it sucks that him and the UFC couldn't come to some sort of agreement with the boxing. At least do like one fight or something like that. I think the biggest fight to make for Francis is maybe him versus Fabricio were doomed. That's a fight I could see doing decent in pay-per-view, maybe over 100k to 200k. It really depends how much that Cyril Gaon pay-per-view did. Let me look it up right now. Well, according to Chael Sonnen, he said it only did 300k pay-per-view buys, but I assume Chael Sonnen doesn't really know much about the UFC and how much pay-per-views they really do, so there isn't any guarantee there, but 300k, maybe it does 200k, 150k, which then you're making your money back if you're the PFL. Look, if there was an MMA fight, maybe in a couple months that was on the pay-per-view, I'd say, hey, this is a good idea. He'd probably make a lot of money. He'd probably do decent in pay-per-view sales. However, in a year's time, like, think about it. 365 days, we could see this guy compete in MMA. Like, that is insane. He will have about three years off at that point. And you gotta consider how rusty is he going to be going into a fight. And like I said, if he loses in the PFL, that really destroys his legacy. In conclusion, I feel like I've rambled long enough. I'm not trying to be a hater here, but I just worry about Francis. But at the end of the day, if he just wanted to compete in MMA, compete in boxing, make decent money, then he's achieved it, and good for him. He basically got the same money that the UFC was offering him, and in the ability to box. So good for him. Let me know what you guys think about the Francis and Ganu situation. Did he fumble the bag like a lot of people are saying? Does this Tyson Fury fight even happen? I'm honestly not so sure. This could just be a negotiation tactic. We're gonna find out, but I think this fight makes sense. Make it in the summer. Fun blockbuster fight. It's a warm-up for Fury to fight Usyk at the end of the year if that fight is actually going to happen, which I highly doubt it is because boxing is garbage, and Ngannou is going to be down. So guys, thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. As always, hit the subscribe button because we are almost at 11k. We're trying to hit 20k by the end of the year. Thank you guys for watching. You guys are always the best fan base in MMA, and I'll see you guys in the next one.